Hey YouTube, it's Monday, January 15th, 2024. It is Martin Luther King Day. I have the day off from work. It's a federal holiday. I don't have a federal job, but my job does give all the federal holidays off. Normally on my day off, I'd be out skating, shooting photos, uh, but it is 10 degrees, it is snowing, and it is super cold. I'm old, my knees hurt, my joints hurt. I'm not getting out there. So I decided to make use of the day by staying in and making a quick video about my new point and shoot camera. This is the Camp Snap camera. Now, I know there's a lot of videos already on YouTube where people are breaking down the technical specs. They're talking about what they like, what they don't like, what they wish Camp Snap would change with the camera. Uh, I just wanna talk about my experience with it and how it works into my workflow and then also why I got rid of my Ricoh GR2 because of this camera. Now, first of all, let me just say the Ricoh GR2 is a great camera. Um, it's small, compact, has a pop-up flash, shoots raw, has awesome film profiles. At one point I said I would never get rid of that camera because of all its features, but here I am three years later, uh, I had sold the Ricoh, um, had switched to this as my everyday carry, and the money I got from the Rico, I put into getting the camera I'm filming you on, which is the Sony uh, ZV-1. Now, uh, what did I like and not like about the Rico uh, when I first got it? It was, as I mentioned, it was small, compact, pop-up flash, great camera just to carry around and use for parties, use for events just have in my pocket shooting when I'm out with my friends or hanging out with my wife or just uh, milling about. But over time, I just felt I kind of, I wouldn't say outgrew the Rico, but there was a shift in what I wanted out of a point and shoot pocket camera versus what it was doing, what it was giving me and kind of where I needed to go. First of all, the Rico, although it does have video, um, it doesn't have a built-in mic, uh, it doesn't have any kind of tracking. It has autofocus, but you pretty much have to set and just live with it. Um, there weren't a whole lot of manual controls and settings for that camera. It's pretty much on par with what you get out of a cell phone, but with no controls and uh, no really great video features. That, that was it. That was what you got. But as far as using it to film or vlog or just for anything outside of just point and shoot, uh, it kind of, it, it wasn't for that, which, uh, you know, is what it is. The point and shoot snapshot camera. That's what it does. That's what it's really good at. And outside of that, it's, you know, it is what it is. Second, when I first got the Rico, I really liked that it had raw. I liked that it had different profiles. I liked that it had the Wi-Fi. I liked that it was basically just a small, um, mirrorless or DSLR camera and a point and shoot form factor. Um, and that was really cool. But as time went on, those photos that I was taking with that camera, um, were just snapshots. So I didn't want to spend a lot of time editing them. I didn't want to spend a lot of time like switching out cards and going through them and cataloging them. The files, all of them were really great. Uh, they were relatively large for keeping on your computer or cell phone when I was just going to end up putting them on Instagram. But as of the last year, I really wasn't getting excited about using that camera. I wasn't excited about exporting and saving and cataloging those, those photos, either sending them to my phone or editing my Lightroom. Uh, I just wanted something I could just pull off the camera um, and just have and that be it. That camera does have a lot of really good film simulations, but it's kind of one of those things. If you have a lot of options of something, you kind of get um, a little caught up in all the options. You can shoot RAW, you can shoot JPEG, but if you have the JPEG, uh, you're gonna wish you had the RAW, and if you had the RAW, sometimes you just wish you had JPEGs. Uh, which led me to this. This camera just shoots JPEGs. It has no back on it, so you're not really fiddling around with trying to get the settings right when you shoot a photo. Um, it has no real settings or real features outside of just uh, LED flash. Um, and the photos, when they come out, you get what you get. Uh, I like that. This camera is pegged as a digital disposable. And honestly, that sits really well with me for a pocket portable 
point shoot camera. I don't have to worry about getting the exposure right because I don't know if it's going to be right. Usually it kind of is, uh, but it, you know, like I said, you get what you get with this camera. Uh, if I'm out with my wife or at my buddies or just anywhere where I have this camera, um, I turn it on, look to the viewfinder, take a photo and put it back in my pocket and forget about it. I'm not sitting wherever I'm at with whoever I'm with, going through the photos, wishing I'd like tweak the exposure a little bit or put the flash over here or, or had it in a different setting. I just take the photo and that's it. This camera is super small, portable. It fits into my everyday hip pack. It also fits into my skate bag really well. It fits into my jean pocket um, and then also the pocket of my cardigan. So who is this camera for? I don't know. Anyone who wants a small little uh, disposable point and shoot camera. Someone who just wants something they can take quick snapshots with, put them on a the computer, airdrop them to your phone, post them on Instagram or whatever social media site you're using, and that'd be the end of it. That's right for you. Uh, awesome. Uh, right now, this is right for me, and so that's what I have. Let's talk about. Uh, my style of shooting and how this fits into my workflow. First of all, the things I mostly shoot are skateboarding, uh, fashion and lifestyle, and concerts. When I first get a camera, whether it be a film camera, a digital camera, or point and shoot, first thing that goes to my mind is how can I use this for skateboarding? How can I use this for fashion? How can I shoot concerts with this? Of course, those things did run through my mind, uh, although I knew kind of what I was getting into with this uh, and this camera is really not designed for that although you can if you're really patient use this for those applications uh, but this is uh, for better or for worse a pocket point and shoot um, it has no settings it has uh, no control it has no back screen you can't really see what you get but you can use this for pretty much anything if you're willing to spend the time, if you kind of get a good sense of what you can and can't do with this and know its limitations. So let's talk about the camp snap. Let's start off with the things that I dislike about the camera, then we'll go talk about the things that I like, and then we'll talk about the things that are just kind of neutral that are just also doing business with this camera. First of all, let's talk about the dislikes. Uh, the one thing that is really frustrating with this camera and it's pretty much the main thing is the delay with the shutter so with the shutter you have to turn the camera on which takes about three or four seconds um, you look through the viewfinder and you take the photo and about two to three seconds later um, it fires so if you're trying to shoot something that's moving or trying to capture some kind of in the moment situation, um, you kind of have to think about what's going on before you take the photo and do it that way and then hope you get it if that's what you're doing. So with skateboarding, if you're trying to use this for skate photos, you kind of have to anticipate what's going on um, then take the shutter and then hope you got it within the delay. But this is definitely not for that because of the unpredictable delay. As I said, it's about two to three seconds. Um, so if you press the button and count one, two, three, by the time you get to three, it'll take the sh shot, it'll make the noise. Um, but where exactly that photo is being taken, I'm not sure. I've tried to count it and thought I had it at some point and then just totally missed the shot or took the shot too soon. Um, it's not a reliable shutter. If you're just taking a snapshot of someone standing there with their board or hanging out, um, it's great for that. Uh, that's what it's for. Secondly, the viewfinder. It's this little guy right here. This thing gives you a rough approximation of what the lens sees. I believe this lens is about a 30 millimeter. The little window box kind of gets that. I think it's a little wider sometimes, but then also seems a little 
narrower, so I'm not really sure. Also, if you wear glasses, can't really see the full inside area. So I think that's where the little narrower part is coming in for me. Sometimes I'll take my glasses off, look at the viewfinder, just to kind of get a sense of composition. And that's where I think it's a little bit wider than what you get with this. So I think this is just gonna take a little bit more trial and error in figuring out what the actual focal length is, what it looks like. I do have a 30 millimeter lens. I thought about doing some comparisons um, with this and that to see exactly what it's about. But um, if, if you're trying to get an exact photo based on the viewfinder, um, until you really figure it out, it's going to be a little bit of a trial and error and you might get a little bit of frustrated. Okay, uh, now let's talk about what I like about this camera. As I mentioned, it's small, compact, fits into my bag, fits into my pocket. It's great just as a pocketable point shoot camera, and I like that. The look. So as far as what you get out of this, I really think it's on par with something like an old iPhone 3G or maybe not like an early Android phone, but something kind of in the middle there. Uh, this looks like what it looks. Um, the files are small, which are great. They're about three megabytes. They're JPEG. The colors out of the camera always come out super blue. My editing workflow with this is just taking the photos right out of the camera, putting them on my Mac, airdropping them to my phone, going into the iPhone photo editor and then applying the warm filter and that's it. And it has its own look, it has its own feel and I like that. But lastly, uh, things that I like, uh, it has a flash. This isn't Flashpoint or Godox flash, it's an LED light, similar to what you would get on an old cell phone. It does a really good job when you have it in auto flash mode of reading the lighting and using the flash, uh, so I like that. Um, the dynamic range on this camera isn't great and sometimes uh, photos come out super overexposed um, but it is what it is like I said you get what you get so overall um, I mean I like this camera uh, and lastly let's talk about indifferences there are two things um, that I'm kind of indifferent about so the shutter sound is weird it's uh, definitely uh, recorded shutter sound. It comes out of these little back holes right here. Um, I put some tape on the back of mine. I wouldn't like water or moisture getting in there and messing up the internal chips. So I just put some clear masking tape over the back uh, to kind of give it a little bit of protection. I know this thing is definitely not weather sealed. It does nothing to dampen the sound. When you take the photo, uh, you can still hear it, which you really need for this camera, because like I mentioned before, um, there is a delay. So when you press the shutter, until you hear that, that camera snap sound, um, you really don't know that it's taken the photo. I would love if this camera took instantaneous photos. You press the button, it takes the picture, um, just like that, uh, but having that unpredictability is what makes this camera what it is. So that's why I'm kind of indifferent with it. Um, it goes back to the whole, it is what it is, you get what you get. Um, just one of the things you live with. Uh, I don't know if there would be an update where they would correct that or if that's something that they can do. Nevertheless, that's just something I'm just kind of indifferent about. The second thing is the battery. The battery on this camera does last a long time. It can live in my bag for about a week or two, normal use, and it's fine. But I have had this die on me, and there was no indication of what the battery life was. It would be nice if they just had like a little LED light that would tell you the battery life on it, or if it would have some kind of blinking light to tell you it's low. But, you know, again, it goes back to it is what it is. You get what you get. That's, although frustrating, is kind of the magic of this camera. When it dies, it dies. And it's something you just kind of have to live with. So those are the two things that I'm just kind of indifferent about. It's a little frustrating, but it's also, I think, what kind of makes this camera what it is. I honestly wish I'd had this about 10 years ago.
I think this would have been a great camera to have on me 10 years ago. Can you imagine if we had these when we were 12? Even better, we got them when we're 40. But now I have it now, and that's pretty awesome. So in conclusion, this camera meets all my point and shoot needs. It's small, it's compact, it allows me to take photos while still enjoying the moments and doing whatever I'm doing without getting caught up with trying to take an awesome photo. I just turn it on, point it at whatever I want to take a picture of, take that picture, put it in my pocket, and forget about it. Uh, I just need something to do what this does really well, and it does that. So this is a good point shoot camera. Is it the best? No. The worst? Actually, not really. I've had worse point shoot cameras. Is it working for me right now? Yeah. So I'll continue to use this. I'll continue to take photos, and it'll just serve its purpose until something else comes along or I get tired of it or it catches fire and breaks. So that was my review of the Camp Snap camera. I hope this helped you in your decision if you're on the fence about getting this camera or looking at it. I would definitely recommend if you're interested just picking it up. Um, when they first came out they were 45 bucks. When I bought it, it was about $60, I think. I think 70 with shipping. I don't know if they're going up because of demand or if cost of production is going up, but whatever it's at right now, just pick it up. There's worse way you can spend $60, $70 or whatever it's at. But if this is what you're after, if this works for you, get it. I'll put some photos at the end of this video to kind of show you what I'm getting out of it and decide for yourself. Anyway, uh, have a great rest of your day. Thank you for watching. Um, do the click, like, subscribe thing, and I'll see you next time. Cheers.